Welcome back Stoner Squad and obviously welcome to all those who are new to the channel. My name is Danny Stoned and thank you for joining me today for some more Imperator Rome. So today is a great day. For those who did not know, Menanda released about two days ago. So I am currently recording this on the 13th of September and Menanda was released on the 11th. So I'm finally home and I've finally got my hands on it, which is absolutely fantastic. And I am so looking forward to playing this with you guys. I really am. It's been something I've really been hyped up for. I can feel it in my left testicle. I get like a tingling sensation. I don't know if I can say that on YouTube, but fuck it, I just have. I'm that hyped up and that pumped up for it, and I just really can't wait to get started. Um, before we get things rolling, I hope everyone's had a good holiday and everything's been going okay for you guys. Um, I've had a great one. Um, it's been a blast, and I am now happy, though, to be home. It's been quite a while since I have been home. So, yeah, I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to be playing some more Imperator Rome with you guys. Anyway, in this series, I have decided to play as Macedon or Macedon. Now, I am going to pronounce the name quite wrong on a multitude of occasions. I have no idea if it's Macedon or Macedon. I have people saying it's one and other people saying it's the other, so I, I really don't know. So I'm just going to go with Macedon. Um, I think it just sounds a bit cooler. So um, I want to go with Macedon because um, I haven't got the achievements with these guys. I think this um, Antipater's Dream, which is with as Macedon own the entire region of Greece, I haven't done that yet. And we could also go and try and reform Alexander's Empire, which I haven't got the achievement for that as well. Um, I could have played Epirus, but I've already done a playthrough as Epirus, and I've already got the achievement. Um, it was in French, though, when I did it, so um, I don't really want to do that again. Plus, um, I think there's been a few people playing as Epirus on YouTube, so um, yeah, there's already a couple of Epirus series out there. Uh, notably, Lambert's one, which seems to be pretty cool, so um, if you haven't checked that out, go and check out Lambert's channel and go and check out his Epirus content. Um, I've watched the first episode, and I've got to say it is really, really cool. So I'm not going to be playing as Epirus just for the simple sake that it's already been done, and with Macadon, we can have more fun achievements. Uh, but anyway, enough of me rambling, let's start the game. So the first thing we're going to do is go through our starting thing. So we are Macadon. We have the Greek traditions, which means we can unlock Octir and Megapolyme ships, which is pretty cool. We can also have the cavalry skirmish tactic. We also unlock the slave raid ability later on through traditions, and we can also unlock the military colonist ability, all this through traditions. Our tradition focuses on strong heavy infantry, which I love. I do love myself some heavy muscly infantrymen, and some good cavalry, which I do like to use, and triremes. Okay. We have a heritage of Cassandros, which is a unique heritage, so it gives us plus 5% national manpower. However, our Diplo rep goes down by minus 2, which is pretty bad, so no one's going to like us, so it's going to be a bit harder to kind of engage diplomatically with people. However, we do have a whopping plus 2 in Diplo relations. That is amazing. I didn't realise that was that fucking powerful. I'll happily take the Diplo rep minus 2 for the plus 2 Diplo relations any day. It'll just enable me to get more vassals, which is great. Um, we are an autocratic monarchy, which means rulers reign for life, consorts can provide benefits, and we have access to one military idea and two oratory ideas, and if we fill them out correctly, we gain a minus 0.10 monthly tyranny reduction. We also gain plus 8% citizen happiness. We also gain plus 10% freeman ratio, I think, in the city. I think that's it. And because we're a monarchy, we automatically have plus 35% to our civ level straight off the bat. Religion-wise, we are Hellenistic, which is a great little bonus. Gives us National Citizen Happiness plus 8%. Now, that has been increased with the update. It wasn't 8% before. I think it was like 4. They might have doubled it. I'm sure it wasn't 8%, but anyway, that's pretty cool. We gained some extra Citizen Happiness bonus, which is cool. Uh, culture, we are Macedonian, which gives us, which is a member of the Hellenistic Culture Group, which has a lot of cultures in it, as you can see, uh, a load of them. So, we are Macedonian. Our leader is called the Basilus, which is Greek for king, and it is Cassandros the first Antipatrid. And we are a bloody beast. 10, 7, 6, 6. We're a bloody good ruler. It is absolutely fantastic, and it's all great. Territory wise, we have 49 territories with a whopping 609 pops, with a lot of them are Macedonian. We have a couple of, uh, a couple of Thessalian pops in there, and then the rest are uh, kind of like very small. We have a couple of Jewish Hebrew pops in there, which is pretty interesting, I've got to say. Uh, we have 17 nobles. Now, this is interesting. This is a new pop category. So, with the Menando update, they've added the nobles, which is kind of like citizens on steroids, from what I gather. Um, so, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. I've not turned it on yet. I've just slightly read the patch notes, not too much. Um, but yeah, new category of pop, which is cool. Uh, we have 145 citizens, uh, which again produces your bulk of your research. Um, I don't know if they uh, make your commerce income now. It might be nobles. I I'm not overly sure, but we'll, we'll find that out as playing. We have 217 freemen, 49 tribals, 
and 186 slaves. Now, a little thing I wanted to kind of um, say before we start this off. Now, what I do know is that slave, um, ha well, slaves do not produce more gold depending on their happiness now. Happiness does not affect their output. So that's a little, neat little change, so bear that in mind. Um, Subject-wise, so diplomacy, we have quite a few subjects. We have about five. So we have um, Arcania, which is just to the southeast, uh, southwest side. We have Peonia, which is to the north, which is pretty good. It gives us like a little buffer state. We have Oreos. Are these all food trees? Now your tributary so plays gold. Peonia is a tribal vassal, which pays us manpower. Oreos is a food tree, which gives us manpower. And we also have Opus, which is to the south. There, tiny little thing over here. What are they? They are a feudatory as well, and Embrasia, who are a tributary. So all interesting and juicy stuff. What we're going to be doing, I'm playing on hard mode, of course. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be playing on normal. I find it a little bit too easy. I will not be playing very hard on this campaign. Um, I said in the last one, when um, in the Albion campaign, the next one I'll play on very hard. But considering there's been a major update, I really don't want to kind of start off on very hard and kind of get smashed and lost. So I'll soon play on hard so I can get used to the actual new mechanics and all the new updates. Um, anyway, now that is done, let's get the game rolling. So, uh, yeah, bim, bam, and boom, my people. Let's roll. Um, I do need to rename this, and I absolutely forgot to create a save file before, so I'll just rename it now. So, we'll call it Macadon. Macadon, Macadon. And let's start the game. Okay, let's go. In Babylon, 18 years ago, the Argyad king Alexander died suddenly at the age of 32. When the five years preceding his death, his continuing military successes has reshaped the world known to the Greeks, his empire stretching uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus. The shock of Alexander's early death and the lack of his chosen successors sent shockwave through the hierarchy of satraps and generals who attended him, splintering his empire into elements ruled by those potentes, or potentates, styled as the Diadochi. For many years, they and their successors have been locked in a bitter struggle over the future of the Empire, drawing all nations within their sphere of influence into the conflict. The wars of the Diadochi will surely continue. Perhaps it is up to Macanon to decide how it will end. Okay, the die is cast. Now, let's see. This is the first time I've turned it on uh, since the update, so let's have a look what's new. So I can notice there's a new thing here, and there's a culture break now. And let's have a look at this. Okay, culture. Our primary culture is Macedonian, which is primary culture happiness 45%. Why? Because uh, integrated culture gives it 50%. Okay. Uh, ruler on popularity affects it now, so if the ruler's not popular, it goes down by the looks of it. And a number of integrated cultures minus 5. So for each integrated culture, I suppose, you get minus 5%. So I suppose you've got one integrated culture. I, I don't know. How do I find out what are integrated? This, this is cool. Um, so this breakdowns the pops I can see. So we have 186 slaves in our country. These belong to the following cultures. Okay. Can I interact with them like this? No, it just tell me what we have. Um, interesting. Filter by culture groups. Integration status. Okay, so we do have one. We have the Thessalian culture is integrated. Which means we have that minus 5% applied up here. Which is interesting. Um, what can I do with these? I mean, what decisions can you do? Okay, so we can exempt from census tax, which means integrated culture happiness goes up by 10%. National citizen output and noble output goes down. Right of appeal, culture happiness goes up. Freeman output and slave output goes down. Okay. Ease restrictions on citizenship. Macedonian culture, yeah, ease restrictions. Citizen happiness goes up. Noble happiness goes down. And protected land rights. Culture happiness goes up. And citizen output and freeman output goes down as well as Freeman Happiness. Okay, so for each integrated culture, by the looks of it, you can have a certain amount of stuff to do, or decisions. So we can create an honor guard for the, for the Thessalian culture, which means culture happiness goes up by 3%, Freeman output goes up by 60%, and a Thessalian warrior will join your court. Okay. Municipal self-rule. I lose stability. I make Larissa into an independent country. And they'll become feudatory. Okay, increases their culture happiness, whatever. Patronage, culture happiness, citizen output, freeman output has gone down, slave output as well. Okay, there's so much damn stuff. And what happens if I change the civic right? What can I, what can I do? Because if I've integrated them, can you deintegrate them? Oh, okay, so you can set which category of pop you want to give civic rights to. If I give it to... If I increase it to nobles, it's plus 5%, and if I decrease it, it goes down? 
Okay, this is all very interesting. I have absolutely really no idea how this all works. Um, what if I was to... Can I do decisions for the non-integrated pops? I can. Okay, there's, oh, there's so much stuff. I have absolutely no idea what to do and where to start. But it's all interesting. Uh, we'll have a look at that a little bit later on, I think. Um, I don't think I really need to change anything at this point in time. Well, that's very interesting. Is there anything else? Anything else changed? I don't think so. Got the new culture tab. Economy hasn't changed. Diplomacy hasn't changed. The trade overview hasn't changed. Um, characters, mercs, missions. Okay, this is all really interesting. Um, anyway, let's um, start doing what we normally do. So the first thing we need to do is uh, pop on our idea slots, I think would be the best thing to do. And let's pop on our military idea. I'm going to go for the... Oh, have they nerfed that? I think they have. They've nerfed martial ethos. That is now plus 5% instead of 10%. It was plus 10%. They've definitely nerfed it. Oh, well, we'll, we'll take martial ethos. That's, that's fine by me. And let's fill out these categories here. Monthly corruption, we can get that down per month. Loyalty of generals and loyalty of admirals is going to be really nice. We'll go for military administration. That is going to be pretty good. And for the last one, improved maximum opinion could help. Or monthly corruption. I suppose we could do that. Let's get the sanctioned privileges. We'll get the monthly corruption down. Corruption is always an issue. Um, corruption makes you pay more wages. Corruption makes people less loyal. It's just all bad stuff, so we'll do that. Um, now, what can I do? Let's call down an omen. Let's see what we can call down here. So we've got, okay, unintegrated, unintegrated culture happiness plus 4%. So the pops that are not integrated, they have plus 4% happiness. Okay, that's interesting. Um, we Extra discipline if I activate that. Don't want that. I don't know. Uh, what's this one? Multi-pop gain. Breast expansion change. Okay. Uh, pop capacity, multi wages for characters, commerce income, and freeman happiness. Okay. Well, I suppose we're going to go for the discipline here. Unless... No, I don't really want to change anything because it costs me stability to change. I would like this, though. Political influence and research points. That really would be cool. But for the moment, no. I, we don't have... We have, like, 50 stability. If we get up to a bit more, then yeah, I'll probably change it. But for the moment, we'll go for this one. Um, let's go for the Hellenic Deity of War here. Why not? Let's do that. That's cool. Now, let's have a look. Trade-wise, has, any, has anything... Whoa, okay. The interface has changed, or the UI. And we have an pop thing that's changed. So it looks like we can see the amount of average happiness for each pop now, which is pretty cool actually. It saves me clicking on pops here and going through everything. So that's a pretty neat little change, I have to say. Um, also have show me how many wine we have. We produce two because we have of course 14 slaves. I think it's every, an extra... Oh no, it's an extra 18 pop provided as an extra two wine. How do I produce an extra wine there then? Why does it produce two wine? I have no idea. Anyway, let's see what nobles do. Nobles produce a large amount of research and contribute greatly to the number of trade routes. Okay, so the more nobles we have, then the more trade routes we, we can get. And these contribute a lot, apparently, to research. Okay, interesting. Citizens produce manpower and research. Okay, so that's changed. They've added it to manpower and the increase... must increase your commerce. They do as well. So they've added manpower to the citizens. That's interesting. Uh, Freeman produce manpower and tax? Oh, that's cool. Okay, that's changed as well. They produce tax as well. Tribals produce a bit of both, obviously. And slaves, tax, and trade goods. Very interesting indeed. Um, let's see what we can do here. What do, let's see what we can import in the capital. Do I actually have any iron first? That's what I want to find out. Do I have iron anywhere? I do have iron over here, so we can actually make some heavy infantry, which is pretty cool. We have it up in Philippi. So, let's see what we can import. Oh, this is all changed. So, does it show you how much... I would give... So, now you have a base... What? You have a base trade value for your goods? So... Do you, like, make more depending on the base trade value? So, let's say if I was to trade in something really low. Um, let's just go for the lowest of the low. Let's see if grain, for example. So, if I was to import from someone... I would gain 0 0.09 per month, okay. Let's see if I was to import something more expensive, like dyes, for example. Uh, well, no one wants to trade dollars. about glass? Oh, okay, 0 0.18. Okay, so trade goods 
or trade routes bring you more gold depending on the value of the trade good. Is there any way to increase the value of a trade good? Can you like build buildings to increase the value of a trade good? That would be something really cool. Um, so let's see what we need. I probably should go for... And I've got surplus of grain here. We should be good food-wise. Let's go for a surplus of horses. It is nice. Heavy cab discipline. Oh, that's changed. So a surplus of horsemen is now... Heavy cab discipline. That's interesting. So let's get a surplus of um, horses. Why not? And uh, let's get it from. Can I get it from anyone who is my tributary or something, or my vassal? No, I can't. Let's get it from you guys. Let's get a. Let's get a surplus of horses. That's pretty cool. I'll happily have that. Let's get something else as well. Let's see if we can go for. What? What, what can I get? What a surplus of livestock now? It's pop promotion speed. That would be nice. Glass of level. Precious metals. What does that do? Citizen happiness, that's pretty cool. Ooh, gemstones. I'd like gemstones. And that's got high base trade value. Yeah, let's get some gemstones. That's, 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 well, let's get some of that. Why not? Local citizen happiness goes up with that. Um, I'm going to have to kind of get used to all this new happiness stuff because it seems to me... Let's let's have a look. Let's go on the culture map mode here. Um, and let's go into, like, Larissa, the Thessalonian city of Larissa here and see our pops happiness. Um, so I've got these 14 Thessalian pops here. So, their base 20%, hemp plus 4%, wine plus 4%, civ value plus 12%, okay, positive legitimacy plus 10%, royal humility, don't know what that is, but plus 8%, integrated culture increases it by 50%. That's cool. So, what if I was to go in something that's not integrated, like maybe, I mean, what, what are our non-integrated cultures? Now, we have some Athenian pops, but where would they be? Does it show me where they are? I don't think it... Oh, it's here. Are these the Athenian pops over here? Okay. And, of course, since they're not an integrated culture, as you can see, we don't have that plus 50%. So this is probably useful. I suppose when you conquer large swathes of land, and then you might want to actually integrate if you have a lot of different culture pops, um, which would be quite interesting. How fast does stuff convert and assimilate now? Okay... Ah, so if it's not an integrated culture by the looks of it, the conversion has slowed. That's interesting. Okay, well, let's keep moving. We'll find out stuff as we play, won't we? Which is um, going to be good. Now, what can I go for tech-wise? Um, okay, we have Peregrini, which is now an integrated culture happiness. That's interesting. Rights of man, national slave output. We could go for that. Oh, it's going to, I think taking these unintegrated culture group happiness is going to be really nice. I mean, plus 3%, I think that's kind of a lot. I mean, I, it looks a lot to me. But let's go for the rights of man first. Let's get that extra slave output. I, I, I feel that we have a few slaves. You have 108 slaves, so... No, 186 slaves, sorry. But let's go for that. That's always going to help us quite well. Economy-wise, we're not making that much gold. 1.51. It could be better. What do we have? I have a navy here, but it's very small. I don't really need that navy. It's costing me a lot of gold. Um, I don't think I actually need it. What is, what is my army like now? Okay, I don't like that. I probably want to change this. I would sooner get rid of the archers and go with some heavy cav instead. So what we're going to do, create a new unit. We'll get rid of these archers here. We'll disband them. Why not? And I am going to get some heavy cav instead. I would like to get three units of heavy cav. I feel that... That would be better. We have, like, a bonus to the cab di well, heavy cab discipline, so I think that's a pretty cool thing to do. And disloyal cap... What the hell? What's this? This is new. Disloyal character, Eucrates Polyperkid. So it's dangerous to upset important characters, such as generals and governors. We should keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Okay, let's just have Cassandros give a personal gift to the guy. Bribe him. We can show our trust in Eucrates by stopping watching them as closely. This would increase their corruption. It could make them a greater problem in the future. Or it could be friend. Okay, so we basically have three three ways out of this. I don't know if I like it this way. I think I prefer to have the character screen up and then actually do what I wanted to do on it. Um, you're the Arshatros, so I might actually bribe you, my boy. How much gold do we have? One grand. Yeah, hell yeah. Let's just, let's just bribe that guy. I've got the corruption reduction thing anyway, so... Have I bribed him? I haven't bribed him. Now I have. 
Okay, that's a bit weird. Like, kind of click on it, and then you click bribe, and I would have thought it would have automatically bribe the guy, but no, then it opens up the window called the character interface, and you have to bribe him from that, but... Oh well, that's a bit that's a bit of a strange thing, but um, oh well. Um, anyway, let's get rolling. I think we're done, we're ready. Actually, no, do I have claims on anybody? Who are my friends? All these are my friends. Can I go for a claim on Epirus? I can. Do I want a claim on Epirus? What about you? You're allied to Epirus. You know what? I'm going to make a claim on you guys, but I should probably be able to summon a war council. Yeah, let's get a free claim. Let's summon the war council. Um, so, the, sh uh, the shroud of evening falls on the magnificent palaces of Pella, as three silhouettes appear at the door of the royal audience chamber. Perseus, a well-loved and competent leader, Eupolymus, a well-known rogue and philanderer, and Theodamas, an expert in matters of personal combat, file into the palace chambers, each determined to influence the Macedonian court in their own manner. Over the course of the evening, Perseus becomes a vociferous in his opinion that Pelen ought to feel the might of the Macedonian armies, and to the surprise of many, Theodamas has begun to agree with his method of thinking. Eupolymus uh, obstinately continues continues to promote his own agenda, insisting Megara is right for the taking. And um, which one's which then? So we've got Pelen. Where the hell is Pelen? Where the hell is Pelen? I've no idea where you guys are. Is this Pelen? No. Is that Pelen? No. Well, let's type it, because I have absolutely no idea where it is. It's gotta be it's gotta be next door to us. Oh, it's these guys down here. Okay, and the other one wanted Megara. Well, I don't really want either one. I was hoping it would have been Epirus or something else. Let's have a look where Megara is. Oh, God, that's not good. But I do have a little... Oh, I do have a bit down here, don't I? I've just noticed. We have we have the city of Corinthos, which is pretty cool. Okay, well, let's just take uh, Pelen. We'll take the guy with the most loyalty, I think. Well, we'll take... The people who it affects more, so we affect two people instead of like losing loyalty with one. The other one, the other way around, we lose loyalty with two and gain loyalty with one. So I'll just do this like that. We'll, we'll take Pelen. Do I have a commander for my army? Well, it's got to be yours, Ante. It? It's got to be Cassandros. I'm not going to put one for the navy at the moment because it's just going to cost a wage, so I'd rather not. And uh, yeah, enough of me rambling. I've pretty much had a look what's changed and stuff. Oh, actually, actually need to do a mission, don't we? Uh, the matter of Macedonia. Do I own the whole region of Macedonia? No, I don't. No, I don't. Well, I could do the Pearl of Macedonia, to be honest. Hmm, I don't know. Let's see what decisions we can we can have first. I want to see what decisions they are. Where are they? Decisions. No, where's my decisions? Have they moved that around? Diplomacy, trade overview, characters. Where is it? Have I gone blind? Where's the decisions? I have no idea. Have they got rid of that? They can't have, surely to God. Oh, it's not. Okay, now they put it here. Okay, okay, they put it in the um, nation overview, so show decisions. Uh, reunite Alexander's empire, that's going to be the main goal if I can get that. I'd like to own the whole region of Greece first, and if we can unite Alexander's Empire, that would be pretty cool. Um, expand the Thassos gold mines. Do I have Thassos? Yeah, we do. We can do that, but we need gold for that. Imperial ambition. We can become an empire if we want. Divine sanction. Change government forms. Yeah, all that stuff, but yeah, pretty good. We know all the basic decisions. So they've got rid of the decisions tab and moved it into the nation overview. Okay, very interesting. Um, I think we're ready. Let's, um, let's roll. Now, I'm going to keep it on speed three because I know that the Diadokid thinks of fire, and I want to see if we get called in. Oh, it's the Antigonid Kingdom now. Oh, it's not the fridge. Okay, so that looks like that's gone now. I'm not going to call you the fridge anymore, my boy. Um, let's make a claim on you guys. I, I think that would be good. Let's do a claim on Illyria Gracia, because I would like to expand towards the coast here and then take down Epirus. It would be really nice. Wow, Pharos is a beast. Yeah, we, we need to take care of that guy. How much gold do we make, by the way? 2.32. It's not too bad. Got a couple of alliance offers. Um, can I have an alliance with Thrace? I suppose we could. I would like an alliance with Thrace because it would actually protect our borders. So not you, not you. And let's go for an alliance with Thrace here. Definitely have an alliance with you guys. Can I improve opinion with you? I really would like to. I'll have to do it at the end of the month, of course. Is there anyone else we could probably befriend? Maybe Egypt? Nah, Egypt don't really like us. But I might improve opinion with them. Let's improve opinion with Egypt a little bit here. We might as well. Now, let's up the speed a little bit here, put it on speed 4. Can I do anything here? Can I... what's changed on the kind of character 
protection. So we can do scheme now. Well, scheme influence. Okay. You gain political influence modifier until the scheme is cancelled. It costs popularity. How popular am I? Not entirely popular. Prove legitimacy. Okay, we gain some legitimacy. How legitimate am I? Where does that say? Got to be in government. Is it in government? I think it is. Yeah, legitimacy 100%. Yeah, we're way legitimate. Because we can uh, siphon funds as well. And scheme political marriage. Oh, okay, that's cool. So now we can actually seek a spouse. instead. Oh, so there's like basically a marriage button that we've all been asking for forever. That's cool. Any law changes? Nothing really here. Okay, let's go. I'm happy. I'm happy with this. Just kind of going through everything that's changed. It's all really interesting, I've got to say. Let's see the cultures. Like, seems to be a lot more on the map. Oh, yeah, look in Gaul. It's now you've got Belgium group. So it's not all Gaelic now. Um, okay, the walls of Daidoki. So having built the largest empire the world has ever seen, Alexander the Great died suddenly 18 years ago. With no clear successor to the empire, his generals, the Daidoki, or successors have since fought over Alexander's spoils. Our ruler, Cassandros of Macedon, is the son of Antipatros, who was the most senior of Alexander's generals and was given the honour to guard his heirs until they came of age. Upon death of his father, Cassandros killed his appointed regent with help from his father's enemies. He then proceeds to kill the heirs and their mothers. Antigonus, the former satrap of Phrygia, is perhaps the most successful of the successors. Antigonus has also meddled with the Greek states and controls the fortress of Chalkidis that was once ours. But success breeds enemies and he now stands alone and vulnerable. So I can now use the legacy of Alexander war goal on other Diadochi. Okay, so I've gained claims on everybody. But they go away on the death of our ruler. That's very interesting. Now do I want to go to fight these guys? I mean, that is the question. Do I want to go and... Because I can... Legacy of Alexander. So, war goal is to show super, superiority. Participants will gain war score from winning battles. Accumulating more than 10 war score from one battles will grant you a ticking war score. Okay, both are obviously for significant reduction to province war score cost. That is cool. Oh, they show naval superiority now. That's new. Ah... Why am I breaking alliances? What's happening? Do you plan to kill me or something? Why are you breaking this alliance, dude? Well, if they break it, so be it. I will probably kill them at some point. Um, do I want to go to war, though, against the fridge? I don't think so. Let's let's see what happens, politically speaking. Let's see what happens. Um, we'll wait till we build the extra 3,000 heavy, um, heavy cab troops, and we'll see how much gold we have at the end of that. And if I can have some more men, then I might get some. No, I can't. I can't afford it. I really can't afford it. Anyway, Antigonid sails. Our soldiers of the coast have begun reporting a great mass of Antigonid sails on the horizon. The Antigonids were bound to turn their attention to Macedon once again after the siege of Rhodes and our generals urges to act with haste. Okay. The more moderate members of our council, however, suggest that a little time might be bought by conceding our last remaining holding under Peloponnese. Um, what? Who, what? I'm not giving you anything. Okay, the Antigonids declare war on me. Which is bad. Um, or I buy time to prepare. And Corinthos. They do take Corinthos. But would... Are these guys fighting anybody else? I mean, would Egypt declare war on them? I mean, I suppose... Do I have any friends? If they declare war on me, Thrace must join. That's what I'm guessing. I mean, I've got Thrace as an ally. I don't think these guys protect me if I'm attacked. Trying to make sure if they do your food at tree. Yeah, I don't think they protect me if attacked. Um, what do I want to do here? Do I want to give it up or not? I don't think I do. Um, you know what? Screw it. Let's fight. Let's fight. Let's fight. I gain stability for this. Um, I, I I think that Thrace would join. Yeah, Thrace have rallied, which is, which is good. Thrace have rallied. Um, that's really good. Thanks, Thrace. Um, let's get the right tactic here. So I want probably Phalanx. It's got to be the best type of tactic for us. Um, let's go down and deal with this guy. Let's move. Let's roll, let's roll, let's roll. Can I go through here? I think I should be able to. Let's see. Let's, let's slow it down a little bit here. I don't think I can. Oh, no, I can't because I've got to go through Opus. Can I have a military access? Oh, no, I don't have military access with Opus, of course. Do I have military access with Boeotia? I don't. What if I have to send you a gift? If I send you a little gift, I might be able to get military access with you guys then. 
Negative 11 reasons. Um, I might have to use the fleet to actually transport it over there. Before they can rally it, I think we can do something here. Let's put this commander, and he's got daring, which is pretty good. So um, I will put you there for the moment. Let's accept these trade offers, get some more gold coming into the coffers. And now what I want to do is pop you guys on there. And then what we're going to do is probably try to go to... Yeah, let's go straight away down here. I don't know if it's too risky. I think it's a little bit risky, but I've got to try it out. I need to kind of get on there and occupy the war goal. Hopefully we can take it. And I might be able to actually get here, get rid of the, like some of his lands. Who who joined? All of this has joined, so this might be a good reason. Athens have joined. Little fuckers. Um, I would like to get some more people coming in, though. It would be cool. But what are you doing? Are you... Actually, no, you can stay here for the moment. Then you're going to disembark over here. Yeah, let's get you over there. I'll quickly get you over there, and then we'll try and occupy Chalkis. Okay, you're in there. Let's get you in back into Pagasse. Is it Pagasse? Yeah, it's Pagasse. Now you're there. Let's get you guys over here now, quickly. Hopefully these guys will join. Let's um, authorise attachments. I really do want to authorise attachments. Okay, so we are here. We are sieging this down now. Patre, you want earthenware? No problem, guys. I might be able to up the speed a little bit here. Yeah, let's, let's up it a tiny bit. Okay, so we've got 4k extra troops coming on here. We might be able to do something. Again, I've never played as Mackinon, so I have absolutely no idea if we're doing the right thing. But we'll give it a good damn try. Are you at war with anybody else? They're not at war with anybody else. Why hasn't Egypt declared on them? Maybe they will after. And what about the Seleucids? Maybe they'll declare war pretty soon. I'm, I'm hoping they will. I'm hoping they will. Oh, more trade offers. What's this? Precious metals? No problem. Um, Delphi, you want precious metals as well. You can have all that. That's fine, man. That's fine. That's fine. We still make a little bit of gold. Um, actually, let's get this navy out here to help them pretty quickly. Um, yep, that's done. I think we should be able to catch him. Or is he retreating onto me? He is, so we should wipe out his two sh two ships there. Anyway, eager consort. Consort Thessalonica today has approached the court with an interesting proposal. Namely, that given the worrying war we find ourselves in, and our own martial prowess, and the personal leadership of an army by the skilled Basilus Cassandros, she accompanied the Basilus and his army into battle. Yeah, why not? You can join me. She gains loyalty, and she accompanied me. She might give us some really cool stuff as well to morale. Okay, so there, that ship's dead. That's good. That's good, that's good. I'm liking that. Let's go over here and um, blockade this little bit here. Might as well. There's a port, so it would help us um, actually... Oh, yes, Thrace is coming with some ships there. Do I go and help? You know what? Let's go and help. Oh, no. I don't need to. Nah, he can, he can, he can mop up on his own. He can mop up on his own. I'm going to authorise attachments here. He can mop up on his own. You're just going to blockade the port. Because there's a there's a port there, isn't there? Is there a port? I'm pretty sure there is. Or oh, it's on this tile, so I need to go around the other side. So let's go and blockade it all the way over here. Do I want to go and blockade it all the way over there? Yeah, I do. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We might as well. It'll, it'll speed things up a little bit. So that should be blockaded now. Let's just double check this. Um, yep, it had been blockaded, so it's not added minus one to the siege progress. We blockaded it, go down to zero, which is good. So it should, inc we should capture it a little bit quicker. Just need to do, need to make sure though where the enemy ships are. I don't really want them joining together. Archon Cassandros offers friendship. So Cassandros of Arcania offers friendship. Um, I suppose we could. Yeah, let's let's have friendship. I do want to keep our little friends together. Let's see. Can I integrate these guys at some point? Is it possible? No, it's not possible to integrate them. What about these guys? No. Is there anyone we can integrate? What about Peonia here? Nope. None of them. Can't integrate any of them. Oh, well. It is what it is. It's a shame. But we'll be fine without it. Anyway, we'll just quickly occupy this. Oh, God. 20k stack over there. Are you kidding me? Where do they all come from? We might need a few more men. Yeah, I think I'm going to raise another small army here. They do have 20k troops coming that way. I don't like it. It's really, really dangerous. So let's go for a... I should probably go for a lighter army here. Because I can't afford to have any of the heavy stuff. How much do they cost per month? Still don't say. That's a shame. Show up with the base cost. But now how much they cost per month? I'm going to have to have a look on our army here. So let's see. Horses cost... Oh god, they don't show me. 
Right, let's go on the macro. No, we can't do it on the macro build. This shit. I'm going to have to go and do it over here. So let's have a look here. Where is the buildings? Recruit cohorts. Okay. So heavy cab cost 0.61 per month. Heavy infantry cost 0.61. I don't really make that much. So I can't really make a too big of an army. But what I can do is definitely go for maybe a couple of extra. Let's go for... That's 1.2. Okay, so these two here that we're building, it should be 1.2. I'm not building anyone. Damn. Let's build them. Um, 1, 2. So that's 1.2. Okay. Let's get some light cav. 1, 2. And then I'll pop on... I think I'll leave that that for the moment. I'll bring them down as reinforcements, definitely. Wow, we have so many damn men over here. What did they declare war for? The legacy of Alexander. So we've got to win battles. Okay, there's a 17k stack coming to attack me there by the looks of it. Um, okay, fine. Have your will then, Theodamas. What's this rival? So lately our basilisk Cassandros the first Antipatriot has come into conflict with Theodamas, a litimiotid. It's every turn decision. Their opinions persistently clashing. Um, yeah, I'm going to lose a bit of popularity here. I don't want to lose an... What are you? I need the philosopher. Yeah, screw it. Whatever. Actually, no. No, fine. Every way. I don't want a rival right now. Um, sack of the Heraclius Temple. Where was that? So that's got to be all the way over here. Syracuse gains opinion. Oh, God. They decide to destroy a holy sign. Aquagas. You bastards. We'll remember this crime. Of course I'll remember this crime. Okay, so we've got a couple more units here. Let's just bring you guys together. He is going to try and attack me. Antigonid concessions to Egypt. Are you bastard? He conceded stuff to Egypt. Are you kidding me? You little fucker. Okay. So the war that I was banging on there wasn't really happening. Hopefully the Seleucids will join in. Please tell me they're going to join. I really would like them to join in. It would be really cool. Yeah, they don't know whether to attack me or not. Come on, hopefully I can take it before they... Oh, God, 19k? I'm never going to survive against 19k troops, am I? Um, you're going to go over here, actually. Let's bring you down to Pegasi, and I'm going to bring you over on boat. Um, okay, they are attacking now. Now, I'm going to guess, as Greek states, they're going to go with Phalanx. So, I'm going to go Envelopment. It's a risk, but I'm willing to try it out. Okay, what we got? They went bottleneck. That's interesting. So, what's going on here? What are the comps? So, they have archers and light cap. Surely to God, that's not going to help them. And um, the balance of power. So, our heralds bring troubling news from the proud nation of Carthage. After a brief period of instability, uh, a hither... Uh, what's this? A hither the four? Toothless governmental act factions seize power in Carthaginian Adirin, making a mockery of the proud democratic heritage of the nation. Uh, our loyal advisors recommend we dispatch an envoy to issue a sharp rebuke at the troubling state of affairs, lest those wise and misers seated in Gilded Thrones take it to their mind to placate the people with misguided conquest. It's an opinion. Yeah, why not? Fuck it, I'll send an envoy. Come on, come on, come on. I know we can do it. Yes, we have better troops. There we go. Oh, yes. Thank you. Seleucid invasion. That is exactly what we freaking wanted. Um, so, the Seleucids have launched their invasion of... The Antigonid Kingdom, which is, means they're going to actually have to divert troops all the way back. There's no way they're going to be able to keep it up. No way. I still have a fair bit of money here. Now, I am going to go and pick you guys up in Pegasi. So I'll move you guys back. Please, fall. There we go. The Siege of Chalcus has been won, which is exactly what we wanted. And now we're going to try and occupy the rest of the stuff here. I might be able to separate piece these guys out. It might be possible. So let's go over here now. Yeah, let's go over to... What's this? Um, Eretria. Let's go there. That seems to be a good thing to do. Um, actually, I am going to end the episode here, people. I'll just quickly accept this. Um, I'm going to end it here, and in the next episode, we'll continue our war against the Antigonid Kingdom. 
Um, it's going to be a bit trickier than I thought, but hopefully with the invasion of um, the Antigone Kingdom by the Seleucids should give us a bit of leeway. Hopefully they'll kind of transfer troops over to the other side. Uh, in the meantime, in the next episode, we'll continue trying to wipe these guys out, I think. Eritrea, it'll be nice to take them out and then probably focus on Athens. And if we can get something out of this very first war, I would be really, really happy. Um, but um, yeah, I am liking uh, the looks of the update, to be honest. There's some really cool stuff, but I suppose we'll really be able to delve into it once we start conquering different cultures, because it is focused mainly on culture so once we start conquering a load of different stuff then obviously we can try all the integration mechanics and stuff but um yeah so far looks good anyway as per usual thank you so much for joining me people if you enjoyed the episode please don't hesitate to hit that like button down below and if you want to see more in Rome content also consider subscribing to the channel for more and with that said and done thanks again for being here people and i'll hopefully catch you all in the next one bye for now